Plasma weapons are lethal. They can punch a hole through your chest, destroy starships, and turn the surfaces of entire planets into glass. How do they accomplish this, and why don't they seem as dangerous as this during gameplay? Well, my name is Same Token, and you're watching Plasma Weapons Explained. Halo and its transmedia have made generous use of plasma. After all, it's the primary component of most Covenant weapons. However, plasma is far more ubiquitous than even that. Nearly all visible matter in the universe exists as plasma, with the sun being a giant ball of plasma we see every day. Plasma is produced by heating a gas to such an extremely high temperature that the electrons are ripped free from their atoms, creating free electrons and positive ions. Because the electrons are now free, plasma is so highly electrically conductive that its behavior is affected by electric and magnetic fields. And here's why that is so useful to the Covenant. This is the Type 25 Directed Energy Rifle, or as it's more commonly known, the Plasma Rifle. During the Human Covenant War, this served as one of the Covenant's standard issue weapons. Unlike human weapons, which fire bullets, the plasma rifle fires bolts of pure heated plasma, within which there is no solid material. Now, with bullets you can store them in casings and then in magazines, but doing the same with plasma would quickly melt its container and then start melting your flesh. To get around this, the plasma must be generated exactly when the rifle fires. Now. While Halo Media contains some really great content about plasma weapons, the specifics of their operation is left relatively ambiguous. However, we already know how plasma works in plasma cutting and plasma welding, and so we can use these applications to fill in the blanks to uncover specifically how plasma weapons likely work. So. To create plasma, you need lots of energy and lots of compressed gas. The plasma rifle is comprised of two plasma generators at either end of its trigger assembly. When the generators are active, an electric arc is maintained between its charging poles. Pull the trigger, and compressed gas is projected through one of the poles. And then, in the case of the plasma rifle, which is fully automatic, this is then alternated between the poles. As soon as the gas passes through the electric arc at the pole, any free electrons in the gas are accelerated and scattered, creating a conductive channel of plasma which quickly heats up to extreme temperatures. A magnetic field is then generated, encasing the plasma, ultimately forming the plasma bolt. This magnetic field is what makes the Covenant's plasma weapons possible. It stabilizes the plasma and allows it to be fired. Once launched from the rifle, the magnetic field travels with the plasma, maintaining its shape while preventing it from dissipating. Upon impact, the field disappears and the extremely hot plasma impacts and probably melts whatever surface it touches. To biological life, that would be lethal. Even a near miss can injure a target. This is because the magnetic field is not perfect, and so intense heat from the plasma leaks as it travels. If it hits a nearby object, heated debris would be flung across the battlefield. At range, direct hits from plasma bolts often result in severe third-degree burns, which cauterizes and destroys deep into your skin. But if you're really unlucky, this might not be enough to destroy your nerve endings, meaning the pain would be excruciating. And then, up close, one hit from a plasma rifle would be enough to dismember limbs. So. Plasma weapons are actually really scary. Their bolts are loud and they glow. It's no wonder why the Covenant makes so much use of them. They're not only functional, but they serve a different purpose, to strike fear into the enemy. And they don't just use large weapons to do this. Some plasma weapons, such as the plasma pistol, are very small, but they pack some serious punch. Plasma pistols can produce an overcharged plasma bolt, which delivers a devastating EMP effect. This can disable electronics, vehicles, and shields. And 
Usefully, to the Covenant, the plasma pistol's magnetic field can gently guide the bolt towards its target. On the other hand, for something more close and personal, energy swords use a highly energy-efficient method of producing a constant stream of plasma while curving it into shape with its magnetic field. And then, when times require more punch, Plasma grenades create large, uncontrolled explosions of plasma. And to make them more deadly, they use smart matter to stick permanently to its target. The Covenant also scale up these weapons and place them on their vehicles, where the additional power capacity enables even more destructive potential. For example, plasma mortars are simply scaled up plasma pistols, firing large balls of superheated plasma in parabolas. You can find them on vehicles like wraiths and revenants, and interestingly, on a certain human vehicle. A prototype tank, the Rhino, utilized converted plasma mortars and was even briefly used in active service during the battle for Arcadia. Humanity making use of something like plasma mortars makes sense as they're a natural analog to traditional mortar shells. But the Covenant went one step further and also used plasma in applications that would be impossible for projectiles to achieve. For example, locusts and scarabs use a focus cannon where instead of suspending plasma in an electromagnetic bubble, plasma is generated continuously while the magnetic field morphs it into a narrow and concentrated beam. And this can be very powerful. So, Plasma's ability to quickly wipe out ground forces is clear. UNSC standard issue armor is easily damaged by plasma weaponry. A single shot would quickly kill a marine. Even Spartan Mjolnir armor was once also relatively ineffective, with plasma quickly melting and then adhering the metal exterior to the skin of the Spartan. And while contemporary Mjolnir variants do come equipped with shields, they can be quickly stripped by an overcharged plasma bolt. Although, despite these dangers, UNSC personnel, and especially Spartans, can often outmaneuver Covenant ground forces while turning their weapons against them. But one area the Covenant were once undisputed was space. Covenant warships use an entire arsenal of plasma for varying purposes, from bombarding enemy ships with plasma torpedoes to slicing them in half using plasma lances. These ship-mounted weapons are incredibly effective. While UNSC warships use a special heat-resistant titanium, it can be easily boiled away by plasma. Some ship hulls are even lined with tungsten, which has a melting point of over 3,000 degrees Celsius, but this protection is… temporary. Clearly, space warfare is where the Covenant really excel. And we can see this in the Covenant's ultimate plasma weapon the energy projector. This is relentless in its apocalyptic powers. Existing in various shapes and sizes, including the plasma lance, energy projectors use a concentrated beam to eradicate anything in their path. With a far more flexible control over its magnetic field, energy projectors can quickly destroy entire ships or excavate large areas of interest. And then, once the Covenant have achieved air and space superiority over an enemy world, they eradicate the planet's ability to sustain life by turning its surface into a mineral that has the appearance of glass. This is a byproduct of literally melting the surface by greatly expanding the energy projector's beam size. On impact, it is the equivalent of a continuous stream of nuclear explosions. And satisfactory glassing, that is, life is well and truly gone forever, takes mere days to achieve. Subsequently, the planet's atmosphere experiences a kind of nuclear winter. The aftermath is devastating. An unnecessary scorched earth policy that the Covenant use to drive fear in their enemies. And plasma is the perfect tool for that job. Now, compared to Halo's cannon, handheld plasma weapons act a little differently in the Halo games. While you can't expect limbs to be fully dismembered, Marines can withstand multiple plasma bolts directly to the chest. And Master Chief, with his shields down, three shots to his chest and he's still standing. 
and running and punching regret. This is clearly at odds with how Plasma is depicted in Halo's cutscenes and transmedia. Now, of course, this is absolutely a sensible gameplay decision, but what this does illustrate is just how deadly Plasma weapons are in the Halo universe. Realistic Halo probably wouldn't be all that fun. And if we imagine, with what we know about Plasma weapons, just how careful Marines would have to be in each level, yeah, Covenant weapons are pretty horrifying. And in terms of headcanon, in reality, Marines are likely jumping to cover a lot more than they do here. So, by making use of the fourth state of matter, plasma, the Covenant have created weapons small enough to hold and others powerful enough to eradicate life from planets. Weaponized plasma is terrifying. And because it's not depicted this way during gameplay, Halo is far more enjoyable for it. Except on Legendary, that's probably closer to realism. In the comments, let me know what you think would be the scariest level to experience as a Marine. Now, you may have noticed it's been a while since I've last uploaded. Once again, university coursework has taken up a lot more time than I had hoped. However, I finish university for good next month, after which I'll be working on videos full time. I have so much Halo content planned and I'm really excited to share it with you. So thank you so much for watching and thank you for your continued support. It's really helped me over the last couple of months. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more Halo content. Please stay safe and I'll catch you next time.